Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of your holy word, open the eyes of our understanding and we know what is the hope of your calling. What's the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe? We'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hide me behind the cross so only you can be seen. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And all the believers say amen. 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 Hallelujah. What a mighty God. Amen. The message today is the doorway into the spirit world. The doorway into the spirit world. We're going to go into the book of Psalm 78. Psalm 78. When you get it, say amen. The doorway into the spirit world. Let me tell you what a portal is. A portal is a doorway or an access. You know, we've been talking about coming up high and we said that God gave us an open door. You know, when you open a door, it gives you access with no restrictions, no limitations. Amen. That's what we need. We need to have access to God's presence. Amen. Amen. But a portal is an opening of life that offers divine protection through which angels and heavenly beings can go in and come out without demonic interference. A portal is an open door that God can go in and out without demonic interference. Okay. What is prayer? Can anybody tell me the definition of prayer? Raise your hand. That's Lisa. Come on. Say it up. Stand up and say it again. Earthly license for heavenly interference. Earthly license. Yes. Earthly license for heavenly interference. So when we pray and we really get sincere about our prayers, we open up a portal. For God to come in and to do whatever it is that you need him to do. See, God can't come in the earth unless we give him the right. <clears throat> now, let me tell you why. Because he gave man dominion and authority. And he said, listen, if it gets out of control, you put it back in control. Mm -hmm. He said, let us make man. And man, we're talking plural. We're talking man and woman. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And let them have dominion. Let them have authority. Let them rule over the earth. So if he gave us authority, then God couldn't come back and take it back. So even though he gave man authority, the devil took it from man through deception. Because he got man to disobey God's word. So listen, there's only two gods. The God of this world and the God of the universe. You're going to serve one or the other. Your influence is coming from one or the other. Your appetite is coming from one or the other. But if you're going to open up a portal so God can move in your life, you're going to have to have three things working. You're going to have to have unity for number one. We got to have unity. That's why the devil's always trying to bring division. Always trying to bring strife. Because if he could bring strife, he could stop the flow of the Holy Spirit. So you got to have unity. you got to have prayer. And finally, you got to be obedient. Those things will, will open up a portal to your life. I'm a living witness that I've seen God open portals. That means he opens up doorways in the spirit world where there's no demonic hindrance. So we're going to look at it because it's in the Bible. This is not my words, this is his. 
But let's go to Psalm 78 and 23. And this is what it says. Yet the Lord commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. That's a portal. And he rained down manna on them to eat and given them the bread from heaven. And men ate angels' food. He sent them food to the food. That was a portal that God opened. That was something that the demonic could not stop because it was from heaven. God opened that portal and he fed the Israelites manna from heaven. Miraculous. People think, well, you know what? This stuff in the Bible is just story. They don't believe they're real. This is real. This happened. And it will happen in your life if you believe it. Only believe you'll see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. How many believe in the miraculous? How many really believe in miracles? Because yeah. God is still doing miracles Amen. today. Amen. Yeah. We just have the opportunity to experience a miracle. When we had that concert, God gave us that concert. I promise you, God said, I opened that door. You may, uh, listen, we could be in his presence and not even know it. I, I was running on, uh, what, is it, what, is it, what do they call that when it kicks in? Adrenaline. Adrenaline. I didn't even realize everything that happened until it was all over. God began to show me, he said, there were so many doors that, that opened because of that event that you don't even see yet. Remember when Jacob had the dream? Everybody remember? What did he see in the dream? First, let's go back. When he got to, to, to Luz, the Bible said he laid down on a stone. Laying on a stone is an uncomfortable position to be in. But let me tell you, there's a secret when you're discomforted. Your discomfort is life is designed for you to have an encounter with God. I'm going to say that again. Your discomfort. Some of y'all are discomfort about your kids. Some of y'all are discomfort about your job. Some of y'all are discomfort about your health. But guess what? Your discomfort, you might be able to miss the day of visitation, but your discomfort is an opportunity for you to have an encounter. Jacob was in discomfort. And because of his discomfort, he recognized it was an opportunity to have an encounter. And so he fell asleep. Then he had a dream. And on the dream, the Bible says that the angels, he saw a, a ladder that reached to heaven. God was standing at the top of the ladder. The Bible says the angels ascended and then they descended. So that means they were on the earth. And they were going up with his prayers and coming down with his answers. And it was unhindered and unchecked by any demonic force. And this is the thing God showed him when he saw it. The Bible, let me read it to you. So you let's go over there for a minute. I want you to see something. Uh, that's going to be Genesis. Genesis. 28. Genesis 28. When you get it, say amen. amen. 28, and we'll start at verse 10. Y'all got it? It says, Now Jacob went out from Bathsheba and went toward Haran. Came to a certain place and he stayed there all night because the sun had set. He took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. Now you try to live a rock that's very uncomfortable. And he lay down in that place to sleep. And then he dreamed and behold. Remember the word behold means in Hebrew is hidden. It means to pay attention. Uh, or in do it means uh, I'm going to say something to you that is skeletorial. Th this is framework. This is not cellulite. This is not fatty tissue. 
This is something you can build your life on. He said, he laid down in that place, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached the heavens. And there the angels of God was ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, so God standing up on, on up at the top of the ladder, and this is what he said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham. What do we see in this discomfort? Visitation. So sometimes, if we don't recognize it, we'll miss our day of visitation. Well, could we so distracted by whatever it is that's making us discomfort or discomfortable that we miss out on what God's trying to do? God is trying to give us a visitation. Not only did he visit Jacob, but he showed Jacob the future. Look at this. He told Jacob, he said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, the God of Isaac, the land which you lie, I will give you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west, the east, the north, and the south. And in you, in your seed, in your children, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Behold, I am with you. I will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Boy, don't tell me that wasn't a word from heaven. My God. Boy, that's heaven. I'm going to give it to you and your children. But it ain't going to happen tomorrow. So when Jacob woke up, everything was the same. But he had a vision. Mm. He had something to hold on to. And all he had to do then was just follow God's lead. And, and I'm telling you this because I know God's going to open up a portal mm. in the spirit world for us Hallelujah. as a ministry. Yeah. He's already showed me there's so many things. I didn't even know this. Uh, one of the young men was telling me that at that, at that, that concert, because I was too busy running around, I said I was on the drum. There were so many people whose lives were changed. Mm -hmm. There were people weeping and crying, giving their lives to the Lord. I don't even know where I was at, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even see none of that. Mm -hmm. But I know that God was doing something in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. Not only was he developing relationships, yeah. influences, things that will be able to get done that God is doing in the spirit, you can't see. Mm -hmm. See, Jacob woke up from the dream. Look, this is what Jacob said. I want to get to that point. It says, Jacob awoke from his sleep. And this one said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. Wow. Wow. God said, I gave you an open door with that concert. Because everybody said you couldn't do it. Come on. Everybody said you didn't have enough time. And God, he, he breathed on that concert. Come on. Yes, he did. And, and guess what? God blessed that concert. People were blessed all around and not only that but God said I am showing you something Hallelujah. you ain't seen nothing come yet on. Come on. what you see in the natural ain't got nothing to do with what I'm doing in the spirit Amen. Glory, glory. That makes sense. I said my God it was awesome. I was, listen it wasn't until two days ago I was sitting on the bed beside the bed that morning and I said Lord God you really showed up to bring a concert to on that level. Yes. And everybody, everything went so smooth mm -hmm. to say we have never done anything of that nature. Amen. My son drove the, the celebrities around in transportation, Van Cowell kicked in. Everybody just kicked in and did whatever they had to do to make it happen. Yeah. The ushers ushered the people where they needed to go. That's right. And listen, we got some kinks that we had in that we got to straighten out. But for the most part, it went smooth. Amen. Because God opened up a portal Amen. so there was no demonic hindrance. Amen. See, when God opens the door, there's no demonic hindrance. Now, I know I'm running out of time, but I was going to show you some things in the Bible. You know, in the book of Acts, in the 12th chapter, the Bible says Peter was in jail. And the people of God was praying for Peter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, and Peter was sleeping. But, but the people of God was praying. What is prayer? 
man's expression of his dependency on God is also earthly license for heavenly interference. So the saints of God was opening up the portals of heaven so God could come in. Peter was asleep. The angel showed up. And he woke Peter up. He said, get up, get up, get up now. Oh, Lord, that word. Peter said, he thought he was dreaming. He said, get up, put your clothes on. Peter said he began to walk. One old door open. Went to the second door, praise God. Why? Because the polo was open. There was no demonic hindrances. The Bible says that when they got to the last door, uh -huh. it opened up on its own accord. Come on. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Come See, on. when you're walking in the spirit, things are open up for you. Amen. Doors are open when no man can shut. That's right. That's right. That's I saw that. I got excited. Yeah. Peter got outside. He said, I thought I was dreaming. Mm -hmm. When he got outside the prison, the angel left him. He thought he was dreaming. See, he was in the presence of a God and didn't know it. Mm -hmm. You could be in God's presence and not know it. You could be walking with God and not know it. But if you do know it all, if you're in a discomfort, it's an opportunity to have an encounter. Hallelujah. Don't miss your day of visitation. Hallelujah. I thought about that when I read that scripture. I said, Lord, you did that for me. I didn't even know. Come on. God woke me up and said, go to the prison. Go to the courthouse on, on the behalf of a young man that, that's about to go get a whole lot of time. And go talk to the judge. Yeah. And I'm crazy enough to do it. I said, how to go talk to the judge? I ain't got, I don't have no, no permission. He said, just go. So I went down there early in the morning, 7.30, the courthouse don't open till night. When I got there, he said, go ahead up the stairs. I said, nobody's here. <laughs> go up the stairs. Obedience. I went all the way up to the stairs. When I got to the top of the stairs, the door open. Oh, I said, Clint. I said, glory to God. I walked in. Nobody's in the place. Nobody's in the place. So I said, where did I go? So I'm walking up the hallway, and the security guard came out the elevator. He said, Joe, how you got in there? I said, I'm going to see the judge. I was. I just didn't know where to go. He said, judge, I'm right over there. When I opened up the courthouse door, the judge was standing there. He dropped all the papers in his hand. He said, who let you in here? I said, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to represent one of our citizens. We've been, he said, come in my chain. We sat down and talked. He said, I've never had a man come on behalf of a young man like this. He said, but I can't really help you. I only judge the evidence. If you're going to get something done, you have to go see the DA. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. I said, thank you so much. I really appreciate the information. Uh -huh. I called this young lady. I know I said, I need to see the DA. She said, I'll set you up. She made an appointment. I went to see the DA. I sat down and waited for him. It took about 15, 20 minutes. While I'm waiting, I Google him on my phone. I wanted to know what he was known for. <coughs> He talked about all of his great things that he's did. Mm -hmm. He started a drug program for young men, young men in the city of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, first thing I told him, I said, I thank you for your time. I want to also thank you for all the things you put in place for our young black men, trying to keep them out of prison. Mm -hmm. And after I told him everything, I, he said, listen, this ain't about me. This is about you. I told him what I was there for. He talked about it. He pulled up the case. He looked at it. He said, what do you want me to do? I said, well, I want you to keep him out of prison. I said, this is third time. Three times, I know that he's a three-time loser. He, they're going to lose him in the system. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Since he's already been three times convicted, if I give him a full conviction, he's lost. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to give him a full conviction with no time served. Wow. And I'm going to put him in the drug of uh, anger management program. And once he goes through this program, he's released. <coughs> I said all that to say this. That was a portal. Yes. Yes. That was yes. a portal without any demonic hindrances. Right. It wasn't me. 
But through my prayers, God opened the portal. What am I telling you? God is not a respected person. If he did it for me, he's going to do it for you. Three things you're going to need to get access to a portal. What are they? Somebody tell me. Raise your hand if you can tell me. I said it earlier. Yes. Stand up, stand up and tell me. Unity and prayer. Unity, prayer, and what else? Obedience. Okay, pray God. I'm going to give you the reward. Amen. Give me that pain right there. Come on to me, tell me. This a pain from our oldest pen, I'd rather. It's this. Amen. And you, and you got his signature on it. Amen. You can hold on to that because it's going to be worth a lot of money because he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna make a lot of money. Amen. Why when LaGree came cut the grass, he told me about the faith. And I didn't want it. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. It was funny, man. Amen. Amen. Listen, I know I'm out of time. I'm not out of revelation. But we're going to deal with it. There's so many things that happen in this Bible. And you'll be able to see for yourself that God will open up a portal. But, but you got to be serious about the things of God. I said you got to be serious about the things of God. Because God wants to take us to a wealthy place. Uh, that's, that's a place where you're not struggling. You don't need for anything. And you're in a position to help others. That's what God told me. He said, I'm going to take you to a wealthy place. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me? Yes, sir. I just wanted to thank you for the uh, concert. It was, it was really nice. I really enjoyed it. And, Amen. Uh, I had been asking Jonathan <laughs> for about three months to sing uh, work. And I oh, my God. Down. Oh, yeah. I was on the second level. Before Anthony got halfway through the song, I was on by the stage. <laughs> <laughs> hey. And look, I, I'll be honest with you, I had never heard that song. And I never heard that song before. And I promise you, when I heard it, it just blessed my heart, man. It really did. Come on, y'all. Would y'all stand with me?